jump in with uh, Coach Ross. Uh, had the privilege of uh, coaching against Coach Ross, I think, in 2007 when uh, he was at uh, Western Washington. And then yeah. uh, we did camp with uh, BC a few years back. So I got to know him a little bit more there and uh, roomed with him at uh, the convention one year too. So I uh, look forward to hearing what uh, Coach Ross has to talk about right now. Go ahead, Coach. All right. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it and appreciate the uh, opportunity to get a chance to talk to you. You know, I'm going to uh, share the screen right now and uh, primarily go to uh, just uh, I'm going to talk about, you know, linebackers. And, you know, the big thing about the linebackers, you know, I've been coaching linebackers, coaching linebackers, defensive line. I've been a coordinator. I've been a head coach. So I've kind of done the gamut. But I always feel like especially uh, – What's important a lot of times is, you know, the technique and the drills. I always, when I go somewhere, you know, scheme-wise is a scheme. And if I'm going to learn somebody's scheme, I'm going to spend a lot of time studying it on film, spending time with them, talking face-to-face. It's like even today, you know, there's a lot of questions. How do you do this? How do you play that? But I can always pick up techniques. You know, I'll go to NFL camps, you know, and I'll look at their scheme. But the big thing I always try to pick up is techniques and drills. So, you know, I'm going to – uh, really hit hard on that, just about linebackers, techniques, and drills. You know, I, one thing I have found, you know, coaching uh, as long as I have, and I'm 40 plus years, so I've been doing it a while, that, um, you know, all good defenses have great linebackers. You know, and that was no different with us at uh, Hamilton last year. You know, Simone Lawrence was the Eastern Defensive Player of the Year. And most places I've been that we've had very good defenses, it only starts with the linebacker. You know, they set the tempo, they're in front of the huddle, they're making checks, they're calling. And there's always three things to always say, talk about. You want to out hustle, out hit, and be mentally tougher than your opponent. You know, and I think that's where it starts. You know, when you look at for the linebacker you're looking for, you know, a lot of times you're looking for, you know, leadership. You want uh, great football instincts. You know, toughness is always a key. Athletic ability is always a plus. You know, it's interesting, uh, and the linebackers I've had, one of the better linebackers I've ever had was about a five-flat 40, and I'm going to show you a picture of him. Uh, it's actually a very good stance picture that I've kept for a long time. I was coaching at Oregon State. Uh, his name was Trent Bray, and he was a five-flat 40 guy. But he was very efficient, played fast in his eyes, and that's a lot of the things I think where you can really help um, linebackers is playing faster. You know, you always talk about playing fast, but how do you get them to play fast? You know, you look at a guy, maybe he's 4-5, but he's playing 5-flat. You see a guy 5-flat, he's playing 4-5 because, you know, his study, his pre- preparation and everything, getting himself ready to play, you know. And there's not another position on defense that allows you to make plays. I tell the linebackers from day one, I can usually look at a stat sheet and see if the linebackers played well. Because linebackers, their job is to make tackles. Yeah, they're going to strip the ball. They're going to fill gaps and those type of things. But you're going to see them in the stat sheet. You know, when you look at uh, linebackers, how many tackles do they make? You know, how many uh, interceptions do they get? How many balls they bat down? Passes defended, tip balls, and those type of things. So really uh, work hard at that. And it's not necessarily the guy with the best athletic ability. The other thing I've found about linebackers that I've coached, the real good ones, they hate to look bad attitude. They just hate to look bad. They're going to do everything in their power to look good. And I think that's really important. You know, uh, like I said, it's the one position that gives you a lot of opportunity to get into, uh, you know, every play on the defense. You know, linebackers, they always got to be coordinating the front and talking to the guys in front of them because the guys with the hands in the dirt, they don't see a whole lot. You know, one thing I like is, you know, pictures, you know, when I say, you know, I want you out hustle. I like showing them a picture of it. So everything I do, you know, I'll take a lot of clips, you know, still clips. I like some of these TV copies and stuff like that where you can get a real good clip of it. But here's what I'm talking about. So when you say hustle, I want them to, a picture to be triggered for them. And then out hit, swarm into the ball. How many hats can we get on the football? So you pay, take a good picture and you look at show them what a hit is. And, you know, then we talk about mental toughness. You know, we've defined mental toughness as how do you react to an adverse situation. And here's Simone. He's getting a little bit of an adverse situation. And most of you guys have seen Simone play. You know, somebody punches him and he puts his hands up. And to him, that is mental toughness because he responds correctly, doesn't throw back, doesn't throw a punch, and those type of things that are, you know, I think are very important. 
you know, I'm a talk uh, stance, you know. I had one coach tell me a long time ago, the most important thing about a stance is getting out of a stance. But I do think it's important to be in a, in a good stance. You know, you want to have your feet, uh, you know, lateral. Uh, I was watching a lot of film, you know, getting ready for the draft this year, and I noticed, you know, there were a lot of linebackers that seemed like they were almost no bend in their knees whatsoever. And the first thing before ever they moved or they ran anywhere, they had to drop their hips just so they could get some momentum. And I think it's important to get them. It's a basic hitting position and some bend in their knees, you know, to get to the stance. The feet should be parallel apart. Well, I mean, it should be about uh, shoulder width apart. One thing I've noticed with linebackers, especially when they get tired, their feet tend to widen. And when their feet widen, a lot of times they can't move as efficiently and stuff. So it really comes down to the efficiency of, uh, you know, their feet. Both heels are in the ground. The weight's placed on the balls of the feet. The knees are bent slightly. The upper body is coiled, not tense. Hands are dangling. You know, one rule I've always had with the hands is the hands are so important. If they are off the ball like a five yard, I don't mind having their hands on their knees and off. The closer they get to a blocker, they need to move their hands more into a striking position. Because you know, I talk about shoulder pads are only, the only thing a shoulder pads are good for is protection only. We don't hit with shoulder pads, we hit with our hands. So our hands have to be in a ready position. And again, it's, you need to have them ready depending on how far you're away from the person that's got a chance to block it. The next one, and probably, oh, in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years of coaching, you know, the eyes have become so very important. You know, I had a good friend of mine, Mike Waffle, who coached uh, defensive line for the, all over the NFL for about 20 years. We coached together at the Oakland Raiders, and, you know, he talks about stimulus response. And I think on defense, football basically is a stimulus response sport. And on defense, especially because – we want every one of our players to respond to a stimulus. So if they're not looking at a, the proper key, you can never ask them to react correctly. So we spend a lot of time on their eyes and where their eyes go and what they're looking at. You know, we're basically a backfield to front read. We don't read line to back just because, you know, it's a slower read and it, it hurts them in the past. Okay, and it's always important to assume a stance that they move laterally. They don't have to move up and down like I was talking about at the beginning. Now, here's a good look at the stance right here. You can see his knees are bent, okay, uh, eyes are focused, hands are fairly relaxed, okay, so he's ready to move. His weight's about, his feet are about shoulder width, weight's over the balls of the feet. But this is a good V that he has right here. So he's in a good position so he can move, and he can move either direction because you don't know what direction the ball is going. So you want to be balanced so you can move in either direction. And then, you know, the first thing with the eyes, you know, proper use of the eyes is important, to, you know, as any other physical skill. What a player keys and sees will help him react. You must see the correct uh, stimulus in order to make the proper reaction, stimulus response. And again, I talk about that over and over and over. You know, the next thing are the feet. And when I get to the drills, I'm going to talk a lot about how do these drills help them become better at with their eyes, their feet, you know, feet, defensive players live with their feet. It'll get them out of trouble. It'll get them into a lot of positions so they can make plays. So, you know, their feet have to be efficient. We spend a lot of time, you know, working on their feet and their quickness. And then the hands, know how to deliver a blow, hand shiver, where to strike, grab the offensive player so they can get off a block. You know, here's a look at the eyes. I talked about stimulus response. They're important for everything, you know. And that's why, you know, we talk about where are you looking. You know, many times, you know, with a player, because I really don't believe players try to screw it up, you know. And sometimes it just boggles my mind. It's like, what are you looking at? And I'll ask them, you know. And it's interesting when you ask them, and once you can get their eyes placed, how much faster they will play. And I will always show when we're doing drills or when we're doing anything else, you know, check your stimulus response. How is it? You know, are you really reacting to the stimulus that you're getting? Or are you looking at something else and they're distracted in somewhere else that they are looking? You know, here's a little thing I use as far as uh, talk about their vision right here. And you can see right here with the Will linebacker, we talk about our, our read is from the back to the front to the line. And this is where his vision should be when he's stacked in that Will position right there. And a lot of the things I will draw up like this so they know exactly where their eyes are and what they should be focusing on. 
And I'll even find point it out to where, you know, if we have a good key on somebody, you know, with a back, because we'll read where the back's offset. We track the back to the mesh. Him reading the mesh, you know, how's the ball in the quarterback's hands? Uh, what tip uh, does he have? What should he see, you know, uh, when, the, uh, when the back moves and his key moves? The next one, if the, the Sam linebacker are out of the box, and any of our linebackers, could be Mike, Will, or Sam, if they are out of the box like you see right here, the Sam linebacker, he's going to key through the end man on the line of scrimmage to the backfield flow. That's obviously closer to him, and he has to look through that because if this uh, tight end comes out to block him, he needs to be able to uh, take him on and, you know, support the run, you know, and that. I'm going to try to – my pointer here. I need my pin here. So as he's looking through here, he can still – as he's keying this man right here is the first thing he sees and keys back to the backfield. Now he can go ahead – and he can go ahead and react properly because he can get a good run pass key. And I think one of the most important things, you know, and it's overlooked a lot of times with linebackers, you know, everybody tries to fool linebackers with run pass, you know, and it's the most basic part of football, defensive football. Is it a run? Is it a pass? And I always try to make it simple for them. So when you look at it, it's like what is the best run pass key for them? And that's where we always uh, look forward to it. Okay, the next one you see down here is a Mike linebacker. You can see where his keys are as far as uh, where he's looking through. He's looking to the backfield. They'll see the quarterback. They're in a pistol formation, which they are here. And then he's obviously going to see the, the lineman. But the first thing he's looking at, he's looking at, you know, is it a tight flow, you know, with the running back? Okay, is it a wide flow by the running back? Okay, or is it a pass release? And those are really kind of tell them, you know, run pass a lot faster a lot of times in the lineman, especially if you get the play action work. So he can go ahead and see that, okay? Now, run pass keys, a linebacker must read the triangle. We talk about uh, the triangles from the backfield like it just showed to the front. And we are primarily a run defender till we read pass. So the faster we can get them to run pass, they're a lot better. With the RPOs that we see now and things, that's why we really spend a lot of time studying uh, on those. And then when it's a pass, we want to find receivers. We don't want to just drop the spots, even though we, we'll open to an area. But we want to make sure that we get the zone and we get the depth and purpose. And it's more, really important to get the depth out of it. And then once we get to our depth and we've controlled our coverage, then we want to see the quarterback. Our quarterback is our final read. And that's where we see the set and transfer to get the interception. Now, the one thing I like to spend a lot of time on with the players is just understanding offenses. You know, in, in my coaching career, I coached uh, about 30, I think it's 32 or 33 years on defense. And I coached like, you know, eight years on offense and 10 years on offense, whatever it was. And uh, it's been very interesting, you know, coaching back to defense. It's just defense, a lot of players don't understand offenses. And once you understand the offense, they play a lot faster because we talk about, we want you to get ahead of the offense. If you're waiting to react to the offense, you're going to be slow and you're going to be behind. So we talk about how can we get you to play in front of it. First thing is like we talk when a quarterback takes a one-step uh, drop, the, the ball is coming out right now. And the, the route's going to be at five and six yards. Well, if our linebackers are lined up at five yards, they don't really need to drop. They need to push faster to the receivers. So that's on the one step. When they see that three step by the quarterback, the next one, now the routes they know we're going to be, we want them to get depth as a quarterback gets depth. We talk about the quarterbacks putting money in the pocket in the bank because he's got to get away from the line and it allows the receivers to get to their depth eight to 12 yards. And then when they take that real deep drop, when they take that five step, and it's usually on second and longer situations you see, they take that five-step drop. Now you're going to see the deep crossing routes. And all this information tells the linebacker, you know, where's my drop? You know, if it's a quick one, I push to the receivers. If it's a three-step, I got to get depth in my drop. When the quarterback's dropping, work for 12, 10 to 12 yards. And if it's uh, a five-step, I can go ahead and work deeper in that. And it's always down in distance will dictate a lot of that. Okay? All right. Uh, the next thing I want to get to is just, you know, some agility, some drills that we do. Um, and this is where I start. You know, usually we'll start out with agility drills. 
And when we get to the agility drills, you know, just some base things. I think it's very important when you set up your drills that you always have a purpose for it. You know, a lot of these, and I'll say, you know, we're warming them up, but we always try to add things to the drill. So we're doing a straight run through right here. We were working on at the end right there where he finishes up, we want to attack the arm of the quarterback. And you see his hand comes up. I'd like him to use the other arm. But again, he throws his dominant arm up there. And he's going to attack that. And Coach, the, um, the video is not showing up on the main screen. So you're going to have to hit share and then select that screen. OK. Uh, stop share. Go back to screen share. Pick your DB sport. There you go. That got it? There you go. Okay, good. There you go. Thank you. Thanks for the heads up. All right. This is talking. This is the, the straight run through. And again, as they come off, and again, I like to put pop ups in it. I like them to move their their feet, their hands are always constantly moving on it. You know, as they work through the drill, I think it's really important as they go through and we set up the drills. And these will change up every day. Sometimes I'll throw the ball at them. Sometimes I'll have them do a lot of different things as far as uh, getting to it. Now, here's a little one uh, running through to talk about a change up where we'll start, where we'll put a heavy bag. This bag weighs about 20 pounds. So it's got some weight in it. It's like, it's delivering a shiver, using your hands. Now you're gonna work your feet. You're gonna start moving your feet, then you come off with a, spin, or with a, a, a swim, and then you're gonna go ahead. Now, this one right here we call foot fire. And this is a great one. I've used this, uh, always coaching the linebackers. You know, when you talk a lot of a linebacker, when he gets a tight read in the box, he's got to have quick feet and he wants to stay square. Also, his eyes can't be looking down at his feet. So by throwing the ball in here to him, now it makes them work their eyes, their hands, and their feet, and it puts them in the right position. And again, they always have to finish on something at the end. But the first time you do it, the ball's on the ground and everything else. And then once you start doing it, then they become really fluent at it, and it really helps them as far as their movement, you know, when they're sliding in the box and they're going from uh, side to side and they're having to move it. And, again, you can see up here at the top that we're starting with, you know, working their hands, and then as they start moving, you know, and it's four steps in each hole, and you can see they're getting four steps in the hole, four steps in the hole, okay, and then with the finish on it. Okay, the next one now is we like to add some shiver uh, drills into it. So again, working their eyes, their hands, and the feet. And when they come off, I like throwing things at them. You know, so they get them down in a proper position, cut drills, because when uh, backs or linemen or somebody comes off and cutting them, we want to make sure they can drop their hips and get in a good position for that. So we'll have them where they got to be in a low position. I think that's basic for linebackers. You want to make sure they're in a good low position where they can strike and uh, they can get off it, okay? Now, like I said, when you alternate it around, you can put, you know, two in the hole, and now they gotta go up and down and change it up. And again, the more drills I do, I try to change it up now. And all you guys that are the coaching with us in the CFL, you guys know the season's long, man. And you gotta have a lot of drills, you know? And you don't get a whole lot of individual time, but you need drills and you don't, you want to change them up. You don't want them to get bored. You want them to understand the purpose of what they're doing in the drill and it's getting them uh, better at what they're doing and what they need to do during the day. Now here's a weave drill and I've had uh, players do this where, you know, run pass, come at, and again, now they got to drop their, their hips and shiver. And you can see right over here when they come up, you know, it's front, back, where they plant that foot and they drive. But again, it gets them down in that good hitting position, which is very important for them as far as, you know, their movement with it and stuff. And again, it works at, you know, backers a lot of times are going forward, they're going backwards. And again, this is all working their eyes, their hands, and their feet. And it's not just your standard, oh, we're going over the, you know, the straight bag. And like I said, you know, I just uh, cut out a few of these today to, so you could see them. And here's the same one again. Okay, here's another one. We call this linebacker shuffle. Because like I said, if the ball's in the box and you want them to shuffle, and the one thing I've thought about drills, if you see something they're not doing well, you want to make sure that you get a drill that's going to help them improve on what they need to do better. And all these drills that I have you're going to see today are all drills that really were designed because of things you see in practice, uh, things that I've seen that help linebackers become more efficient and play quicker. 
you know, I like using the rings and tackling. As linebackers, we're going to tackle every day. I like them to get their hips down in this, keep their shoulders square. So like when Noel was talking about, you know, they're stacking, reacting, to get them in that position. And then at the end, they got to track and come up and, and make the tackle on it. Now, here's one that is just a straight stimulus response over the bag. You know, and it's always interesting when you watch them. It's like, okay, when I move here, how long does it really take them to react to it? Then they take off and run, and then we throw a ball to them. Again, picking their feet up over the bags. And, again, this is good work for backers that are in the box. because They have to stay low and square, and their eyes have to stay up. And, again, it works a stimulus response that uh, we're looking for. And you can see this one here. This is just a change up off it. It's the same one, but instead of throwing a ball, now we take it and they go through, they run through and make the tackle. So again, it's just change ups on drills, so it becomes different. The second thing we get into are our shed drills, you know. When we want to shed uh, and get off a blocker. The first one we do, and we even use this in pregame warm up, is we want to get them in a basic hitting position where they lock their arms out and use their hands. We never want to make contact you know, shoulder pads and shoulder pads. We want to use our hands, keep separation, and then we want to disengage at the end, and we're always getting to the football. And this is always a key for us, so we've gone from the agilities. Now with the hands, we want to use the shed. And even when without pads on, you can still uh, do this drill. Again, we want to go in both directions. And when they strike, the biggest thing to get on when they strike here is you want to make sure they have their front foot is up, their inside foot is up, their outside foot is back. So they keep a good leverage position where they keep their outside arm free on it, and then they can separate and get to the ball. And you can see we use a different, we'll use a two hand throw, we'll wear on a throw and a rip. You know, we use a couple different uh, separation techniques. But this is all a great time to be able to, to utilize these and work on their technique so they can get better uh, as far as doing that. And even during the season, when I see guys that are having trouble uh, getting off a block, you know, I will throw these drills in, you know, just uh, to refresh them. You know, the one thing I found about over a long season, you can lose fundamentals if you don't really keep working on them. Now, here's a shiver ball. And these shiver balls are really good because if you look at the position it puts them in, they stay low. And again, you want inside foot up and a little more of a step with it as they hit. Here's a little better look at it. And you can see right there where he drops his hips and he wants to lock his arms out so he gets a good strike on it. He's rolling it too much. See how his arms are in? You want to have your arms in a locked out position to keep them away from your legs. And again, working on the cut drills. And these drills don't take long. Uh, they will, uh, uh, you can get through them in a few minutes and it really gets, you know, some good reps. Now here's another shed drill. This is uh, off the uh, sled where we do, we call this the grip and rip, where we want to get our arms and we can start where we're going to strike. Okay, got our arms locked out. Now we want to get rid of them. We can throw it. Now we go to make the tackle. And you can see this is a great one without pads. And we've gone more and more like, you know, during our season, we never have pads on. So I think it's important to work the skills, you know, even though you don't have pads on, and this is really a good one right here. Again, using the grip and rip shed. And the important thing on that is they get their arms up over their head. They use good form. They get the extension. They lock their arm. They throw away from where, and this is the other technique I was talking about with the two-hand throw and rip. And then making the tackle. And we can change up the tackle, too, as far as the front going to the front shoulder or to the back as far as if we want to do a profile tackle or an angle. We will use a sled sometimes during the year doing the same thing as far as using their hands, again, on a long season. And the biggest thing is you get that good flat back as they strike, you know, getting their hands in. And I think it's about being comfortable and working on the timing of striking a blow. You know, they're like a boxer. And it's amazing how many, you know, when I was growing up, everybody boxed. Nobody boxes anymore. But when you box, you step with that, you take that short jab step, and it, it gives you, it packs a lot of power to it. And again, I think those are good for it. Now here's the tackling. These are individual tackling. Then we go to some shed and tackling. But again, this is just an angle tackle. We're going to take away the one side, run them to the side. We call this a profile, profile tackle because we're going from the side. Now here's a good look at it. And the first thing we want to do is we want to close the distance on the runner. So we come up. 
we come to balance, if we come to balance, now we want to have our head behind and we want to finish our profile tackle on that side. You know, really emphasizing keeping the head out of it, you know, on the back. But again, it starts close the distance to the ball carrier, profile tackle, head on the backside hip. Now, here's another one that I always think it's important to work. This one I got, I can't remember, I got this one a long time ago, but somebody told me that running backs, the first thing they're taught is on contact, they're going to spin. And you watch in our league, they all spin. I mean, for the most part, the bigger backs usually don't, but little backs are all going to spin. So we work on tackling a spinner because it's different. You know, how many times you go and you do a flyby, where now what we do is we come downhill, we close the distance, and now we track the spin. So we work on the spin tackle so they can get the feel of, you know, what's the back going to do? They know on contact he's going to spin. They want to be ahead of it so they can keep them from spinning out of their arms and coming off it. Plus, it keeps their head up because they don't drop their head. And that's where most guys will uh, lose it on spin tackles when they drop their head, not all of a sudden. And then we'll have them change it up where they can either do a, a spin or they'll have them do the other. The other is just a tackle where they're going to close the distance. I like using these roller dummies on it. I've got a couple in here where actually you can kind of fake them out a little bit. It makes them come to balance and really uh, sink their eyes, and you can take it to the ground, you know, with pads or without pads. But you can see it's amazing when you watch them come down. Just that little wiggle I do a lot of times will make them uh, hesitate or miss on it. It's like here you can see it, and these are this is DBs. We do a tackling circuit, and we have everybody in there. And... Uh, he caught a lot of grief on this one right here because he's coming down. He thinks it's going to be an easy tackle. And I gave him a little juke. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, now they all get on his butt a little bit for that. But I think it's good because now it forces them to now to come to balance, close the distance, and use good form. You know, but like I said, we do that all year round. You know, the next one we go to is a shed tackle. I, I like this drill. It's called recoil where you're going to have a blocker. It's uh, two blockers. And then you're going to have a ball carrier, and we get a frontal tackle on this one and got some, uh, have some variations off it. But here's a look where he's going to come off. And, again, he's coming downhill, and this is good work when he sees a run coming at him, everything's coming downhill, where he'll shed the blocker. He has to do a second shed, use his hands, and now get himself in position for the frontal tackle. So, again, you're taking it from, you know, a one-on-one -on -one to now the uh, two, and now you got the three. Okay, now, a change-up on this drill, which I really like because a lot of times you'll see this, you know, in every one of these, I'll show the, the players plays that they see where, you know, the guard came out and blocked them high, the back came and tried to cut them, so now they got to play the cut block, now they have to make the tackle. And again, this is the frontal tackle. I'll do cut back tackles and change that. But the roller balls are good. It should be four to five yards, actually, is a good width to have it from. But again, it forces them to get off a block, drop their hips, play something at their legs, and then be able to make a good frontal tackle. So here's a good, another good illustration of it here. And again, I just, you know, I'll change these things up. Uh, I think I got another one coming up here where, uh, here. Now, this is where they don't know which way it's going because I've got uh, on both sides here. You know, they don't know. We got a line back here. This is the second blocker. This is the ball carrier. So I give the direction on which way they're going. So it's true stimulus response. He doesn't know which way he's going till he takes off. Now he plays this side, so this side's live, the other side is dead. And then we're, uh, this is a uh, profile tackle where we're to the backside hip tagging off. So again, you know, it's just a, a change up of what they're doing. Now it's going the other direction. So this way, you know, it's a true read. They have to see this, you know, where it goes. Okay, now. Run technique will work this. And again, this is a very basic one to start with where you just see the run action and the, the backer reading the tight read, uh, coming downhill at it. You know, they're stacked. This is like in our two backer defenses, which we have uh, multiple of them. And now they have to see the wide read by the back. You know, they have the wide flow. And now they want to hit and pick up their uh, pursuit angles. And again, you know, the biggest thing that's important when you look right here, as the back moves, you see the stimulus response 
of both of the linebackers. And you want them to get to go in unison. And doing drills like this, I found, it gets them, because you can show them when one guy's slow or he's, he's not seeing the right key, and he's slow at moving. But you can see right here, these guys look like they're doing a two-step because they're directly in unison coming downhill. First man comes downhill, uh, backside backer comes to the backside hip. So it's a real easy way to just work on their run fits and stimulus response so they can come downhill. And it's a good way to start it out. And again, you know, when you start uh, teaching your run keys, I think this is a real good way of getting them so they're tracking the back, which is what the reads are anyhow. And here again, here's a tight read right here. Now, here's a little bit where we'll work on run keys and uh, some fits like this. And again, like I said, we're reading the, the back to the quarterback. So as they're seeing this, now as you can see right here, he sees it quicker. He sees the ball in the belly. He comes up. He's going to make the tackle. He's obviously an outside. He's got a quarterback, to, and then he falls in on the dive. But it's a good way. You talk about stimulus response. How do you want him to play from the position they're in? And again, we line them up in a lot of different positions in our defense. Here's where three out here. I took another backer. We had one inside and two outside. And then we worked the play action off it where we get the Sally look. And now the backer where the first one's going to contain, the second one is going to go to the receiver. So, again, you can work on, you know, what, what routes you're seeing that week. How are people attacking your linebackers? And how can you help your linebackers? So when they get this action now, they're not, you know, it's not, oh, shoot, what am I doing? It's like, okay, yeah, this is where my eye goes. I like his eyes to go right to the receiver instead of looking back quite so long. But, again, it, it gives them a good emphasis of where they can see it. And then you can always check, are your eyes right? Are you stepping right? Where they all read the run pass. That's a good way to get their uh, the run pass keys. All right. Uh, get to the, uh, the pass rush drills. And, again, we're doing pass rush drills, and then I'll do uh, a little bit of drops. You know, pass rush with linebackers, because we do blitz them a lot, they need to be effective pass rushers. You know, the first one we do here is this is just a club and a rip. You know, we want to get as maximum power. We want them to move their hands and their feet. And then, again, catching the ball at the end. We'll do the same thing where we'll have a mirror, uh, the, the throwing hand. We want them to do that. But the, the ones we really basic work on is the rip. Now, here's an interesting look. When you look at the uh, player right here, 34, as he's coming through, his rip isn't very good, especially on this one. Sometimes when I'm doing this drill, I call it a second-hand drill to really emphasize, you know, because they're going to do the club, but they're lazy on the rip. So if you get them to just say, okay, accentuate the rip, you know, get strong at the rip. So you get that second arm through because if you focus on it, now you can see him. This might have been a day he did this because you see how he exaggerates the rip because it was a second-hand day. You're working on the second part of your move not the first club, now you're working on the rip. Here it is coming back the same way. The next move we'll do is we do the swim move. And those are the two basics, you know, that we get because we don't have a ton of time to be able to, you know, work with the linebackers and they don't rush the passer all the time. A lot of times they're on backs. We have a lot of drills we will do with them. And you can see on the swim, this is a good look at it right here where you can see the arm comes over back down and he clears with it and he doesn't expose his body and that's what we really want to try to do is keep it where it doesn't expose his body and then we always have something at the end either the hand or here's another good look at where his arm his arm is tight coming over you know and we really work on that it's amazing you know how effective they become you know just by work on this is later during the season again these drills are taken <laughs> all during the season as uh, we went through, you know, on the individual. Now, he's got a problem because his arm comes up way too high. He doesn't bend that elbow and break it. And those are all the things. Once you have it on video, you can really do a good job of teaching them, improving them, making them more efficient on it. Because once you get into the season, we get so caught up in scheme a lot of times, it becomes a lot tougher. The other thing we'll do is uh, I'll start, and you can see here as I start out with it, is I'll be the lineman. And I'll have my hands shoot up. Now, when they're coming off the edge, we classify offensive linemen. We come to them. We call them a low-hand lineman or a high-hand lineman when we talk about their setup. 
So low hand, we want to do more over moves. We want to do push down moves like what we're seeing here. If we see high hands, a lot of times we want to do push moves and raise them up above. So you can see right here, we'll start out. I'll give them a hands. I'll give them either a high hands or a low hands. So then we talk about, you know, what's your plan as far as rushing this guy? He's a low hand guy. I got to get his hands down. I got to get around him. Then I get to the next level and work my hands and my feet. All right, the next thing, because backers are blitzing and they're usually counted as blitzers, is we will work on blitz timing. We'll get them to, to eliminate their false steps. You know, sometimes we'll put uh, receivers and other things that'll help them time up their blitzes, but we'll have them just together and we'll work on timing their blitzes up. As you can see right here, again, as they work to time it up, and then it goes to the ball, obviously. As they're coming off, they see their trigger that's telling them, you know, the waggle or whatever we have is the key that week as far as when they want to start prowling up the move. And then they, the final one is they're coming up and they're pacing and uh, timing themselves is they want to hit it, make sure they're a yard off. As we know, you can't be over that line. And then they get the great get off, you know, to get up field. We'll tell, also take it from the outside, where they come from the outside uh, angle on it. You know, everything they got to do, we try to simulate with a drill. You know, if they're an edge rusher right here, they come down, he's getting a sally pass. And you can see right here, the, the, this was emphasized from day one, you can see the hand comes up and we're attacking the arm. And that's what we want to do. We can't hit quarterbacks anymore. The only thing we can do is attack the arm and affect the quarterback. So we really want to incorporate in all of our drills as many as we can, how can we affect that quarterback? How can we affect his arm? Because that's about the only thing you're allowed to, to hit anymore, you know, with a quarterback. We set this up so they haven't come off the other side. They get into the rolling start, which will give them more speed on that right there. And again, time it up. And we'll get the, the snap into it. Uh, we'll do that also. But the big thing here was just getting to come from space to come up, move down. You know, a lot of times we assume all players know how to do all the little things, you know, as far as time up a blitz coming off the edge. And they need practice at it and understand exactly how to be the most efficient they can be uh, doing that. Uh, pass coverage drills, you know, and because we are 70% pass in our league, you know, this is a start with a basic. This is almost day one of training camp right here where we, we open them to basically to an area. They want to get to their depth, 10 to 12 yards, set. Then they want to see the quarterback, mirror the quarterback, break on the ball. And again, I think it's important when you do these is to do it in different parts of the field. I think it's really important not to always do it on the sideline. I do it a lot because of space, obviously, on field sometimes. But the more they can do it on the field and get them to the areas they need to be, and now they're settled down, then their, their coverage is controlled, their eyes back on quarterback, just so they're getting the proper quarterback drop. Now, this is a drill I've done well, for 20 years now. And it really is one of the better drills I've ever found as far as having receive, or, uh, linebackers so they actually get a great break on the ball. You know, here we work on, we call it steal in second. And we, the way we teach it is, He's going to get depth. When the quarterback gets depth, he gets depth. So he's back to his 10-yard depth. These are two receivers right here that we tell him he's a pitcher. So you're just like you're on first base and you're trying to steal second. So as you see the quarterback get to his set, okay, you got to be uh, – because he can throw it either direction, you have to be able to break either direction. But once his shoulder starts to turn, now we can go steal second base and when a quarterback jukes them or whatever and they don't get it, just tell them you got thrown out second. But this is a great look at how you steal second base right here. And again, it's a good drill to get them in space where they have to move and now they're reading the quarterback. Because if you don't see the ball thrown, it's awful tough uh, to intercept it. And again, you can see them. Now, what we do with this too is we'll put a check down here. We make it a whole box. So you got a, a deep route, a deep route, and then you have two short routes. So now they got a, a break to the check down. And again, it's all about reading the progression that they have on the quarterback while I was talking about with, uh, with the progression. As far as getting themselves back, set on the quarterback as he sets, you know, you've got to be true till he starts to move, okay? And the quarterback, you know, he's giving a little more fakes than uh, a lot of them do. But again, you have to make sure when you see that shoulder go 
and you're looking at the tip of that, you want to make sure you have a good break. Now, on the break, and a lot of times you'll see they'll take a lot of false steps. He takes a little bit of one here. But again, by doing this, you're saying that these guys can cover 10 yards. If you got six guys underneath coverage, you're covering 60 yards of the field. They can only break five yards. Most of them can break a lot further than five. They're more like, you know, eight yards is what they're going to get on the break each way, which gives you 16 yards in each direction. Here's a good look at where he got his drop, he got his depth, came down, then make the tackle. Now, this is where I talk about we do it on the field, and I like doing it on the field, you know, especially, you know, you take the middle linebacker. A lot of times he has to drop to the number three receiver, and the number three receiver, and a lot of routes is coming down the middle of the field. So when he's doing that, this allows him to see it, get back, get set, and now he can get himself uh, back in a position so he's used to playing that position of the field, and then he can get his key back to the quarterback. And again, work on getting the depth. And there's a lot of urgency. You can see we're not just cruising out of there. And we start, he's on the hash. He's got to get to the middle. And now you can go ahead, set, and break on the ball. You know, we'll take it and move it from the other side. So now he's got to get himself back. You know, he dropped out to the number three receiver. The quarterback now brought it back inside. Now he can break. And again, this allows you, you know, it's always interesting when I break down film and I watch quarterbacks throw and I watch guys break, you know, there may be a DB or a linebacker might be two yards away from the guy who can't make a play. It's because he never breaks. You know, and this really I found has helped them break because once they get to death, now they're, they're seeing it and they get a lot of rest of that. We will do this every week, some form of this. So it keeps them fine tuned with this as far as, uh, you know, good breaks on the football. Now, this is just a jam. Like I said, you know, a lot of times backers, you wanted to jam for it five yards. So this is just a jam and break drill. So again, we want to be in, they're going to be a couple yards away from it. Now we want them to get down with it. You know, both hands, drop their hips. Now they got to get their eyes back to the quarterback and then we uh, throw them the ball. So this is a jam and break drill. So all we're going to do is we're going to go over. And again, I want them at least two yards away. Sometimes I have them even more. But as the receiver hits five, we hit them. Now we can go ahead and break the ball. And again, everything becomes a progression as far as what we're doing with it. You know, here's going the other direction, where now he jams, he sees it, he's in a shuffle, he sees the quarterback turn. Now he can go ahead and steal second off. So there's always a progression to all of it. Now, the next one to this is a jam drop and break. And again, a lot of these drills were created because we got hurt by this. You know, sometime during the season or somewhere I've you know, been hurt. So now we put two, we put it on the field and he's got to go over, he's got to jam. And now by putting it on lines, you can see what their depth is. You know, he's jamming at five. Now he gets himself back to 12 yards. So, you know, with a receiver, you still want him after he jams the receiver. It's not natural a lot of times to get your depth. So after they jam, he wants to get his depth and now see where the ball's going. And then we have him steal second off that. But again, it just, you know, what they have to do, you see him on the field. This is usually a will linebacker, a lot of times jamming the number two receiver. You know, he jams, and then the ball's got to come back. To, then he's got to find where's the ball going. Because once he's jammed, he's helped eliminate or he's helped the halfback or the corner by jamming the receiver. Now he's got to get himself back because, you know, you got to see where the progression is and where the route's going. And again, doing it in both directions. Because you'll find guys are better jamming one way than the other way. And they have a bad side, then you want to compensate for it and get them to work on it more. As far as, you know, the jam, get depth. Now they go ahead, steal second on the break. Okay. Well, Paul, I appreciate it. Time-wise, am I good? You're good right there. I think we've got time for a couple questions. You definitely – yeah bolt there of uh, all the linebacker drills that was awesome stuff i loved it so if uh, if you have you know, uh, just go ahead and get, that's not all of them but i thought you know it, you can always pick up a drill yeah i watched and i pick up that's how i picked up all the drills i got i stole them from somebody else you know so i want to give you know a, a pretty good majority of you know a lot of different drills that you can do to help linebackers play faster and be better players Absolutely. And obviously, your, your 
video guys love you because you that was all from one season. So that's that's <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so if, if you have a question, guys, just go ahead and unmute and uh, go for it. Robin, yo, it's William Fields here. How you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing? I'm doing great. First of all, I just want to say uh, that was an awesome presentation there. I don't really have a question. Just wanted to reemphasize uh, my favorite part of it um, on how you taught how important eyes are in football, knowing where to put your eyes. Uh, something I try to emphasize uh, as well. And uh, I think that's extremely important in, in, in football these days. You know, Will, there's no question on that. You know, the more I coach, the longer I coach, the eyes are everything. You know, if you know. get your eyes right, that's why even in practice, and you remember this from coaching with me, in practice, I always stand behind the offense so I can see their eyes. Right. I'm sitting there, and get, hey, get your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, you know. So I know. It is, it's all about if you get their eyes right, you got a chance. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Good seeing you, man. Hope you're doing you, good. You too. You too. All right. Another question? Uh, yeah, Go. I have a question. Go for it. Um, hey, Coach. Uh, thank you. Great session, man. So, uh, awesome. Um, when we talk about long-term development, specifically with younger athletes, I, I coach minor. I coach wrestling at the university level, but specifically with football, I coach at minor with my son. It, by the time they get to you, these, these athletes, are there times or there, are, there, are there skills that you wish they had been shown at a younger level that by the time they got to you, they were really fine-tuned at? And if so, what are one or two of those skills? That if you could go back and say, hey, Justin, you know, you're coaching these minor kids. They're 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. If I can give you one or two tidbits here that I could really appreciate you doing for me so by the time they get to me in 10 years, this is what I need you to do. Yeah, no question. You know, and everybody we talk about, you know, players are all at different levels. You know, uh, I learned this more than anything when I was coaching at the Oakland Raiders. You know, I had, uh, you have 22-year-old rookies and I had 33-year-old linebackers, you know. So you got to coach them at different levels because their football knowledge is different level. So you got to really coach them at different level. You know, I think in the youth level, you know, that's why I always put in stance, because I think stance is very important, sometimes overlooked. You know, just watching a lot of the draft, the guys were, you know, they're not in position to take a block on. They take false steps. One of the first things I always look at on a player, you know, when he blitzes or when he moves, is he taking false steps. So you can really help him with that. Like you saw that run key drill where those guys, you know, the, the back move, the direction, and both of them took slide steps. Everything was efficient going to the ball. And you can make them more, you can help them with that with just the base fundamentals, I think. And that's why, you know, in my presentation today, I really wanted to emphasize, I know, you know, a lot of coaches, you know, you can get overly caught up with scheme. Well, you know, scheme's not worth a darn if the guy, you know, takes five false steps and can't make a tackle when he gets there. So, you know, I kind of go back to the basics of, you know, stance, alignment, uh, start, running downhill. You know, those are the things that uh, – and their eyes, you know, like Will talked about, you know, if you can help train their eyes, you know, their eyes, their hands, and their feet. And those are the biggest things, being in football position. The scheme will take care of itself because that's our job to teach the scheme. You know, hey, you go to the number two receiver, you know, you carry him here, you know, in this front, we're here, there. You know, this is the front, this is your coverage. You know, this is your alignment, your assignment, and adjustment. We will take care of that. The biggest thing is they're coming up because everybody's going to have a different scheme. You know, I think of just that. And to give you an example of how important fundamentals are, and I'll give you a quick story. I was coaching at the Oakland Raiders in my second year. Uh, we picked up a linebacker named Willie Thomas. He was a veteran out of uh, Philadelphia. And he'd been to like three Pro Bowls. And he just the year before signed a $3 million a year contract. Now, this is 2000. So he was, we got him in a fire sale. Because he went through that next year after he signed the big contract, and he had uh, no interceptions and no sacks, which is a bad thing when you sign a big contract. So what happened with him was uh, we got him, we got him in camp, and Willie was had the best ball skills of any player I've ever coached to this day. And I mean, I've had some I've had some good players, 
and he was unbelievable how good his ball skills were. He could do that steal in second, but he hadn't been working on those fundamental skills, you know, his last few years at Philadelphia, and he had he'd fallen off. He gets with us in 2000. He winds up leading the league and inter- he had six interceptions for linebackers, led the league in interceptions, and had five sacks. So all of a sudden, he kind of re- resurrected his career. And just by doing some of the drills I showed you, stealing second, you know, breaking to the ball, vision back to the quarterback. You know, it was interesting. You know, like I said, I've been doing this a long time. I remember Dave McGinnis. Uh, he was with the Chicago Bears. I went to a, we were clinicking together and stuff, and we were talking about, you know, I said, what was the biggest thing that hurt your zone defense? He said, we went through the whole season of, uh, I think they played 18 games that year. They had 16 and two playoffs. And he said, the biggest fault we had in our zones was breaking on the ball. So he said, the next year we went back to fundamentals, breaking on the ball. And all of a sudden, our pass defense, our zone defense got better. So, you know, it's really a simple process. Sometimes we try to make it, you know, overly complicated. But I think if you go base fundamentals, I really think, you know, that helps. And from the younger ages, the more you can do that. Because I see even in college football right now down in the States and, you know, everywhere everybody gets so hung up with scheme, their fundamentals aren't good. How many missed tackles you watch in NCAA games now? <laughs> everybody misses tackles. You know, it's almost become a, a lost art, you know. And that was the one thing that helped us last year in Hamilton. And Orlando's great about that because, you know, we have individual every day and it, fundamentals are always emphasized in how we tackle and how we do things. So, you know, the fundamentals are always going to win for you. Hey, so uh, Coach Har, is a, he has a question, then uh, we'll wrap up. All right. Yeah, coach. Hey, coach. Uh, great job with the technique piece, and I love how you combine different stuff in your drills. Uh, my question to you, since you've got many years' experience, like I, even more than me, but um, you coach each level of the defense. Do you have a uh, drill tape for D line as well, like you showed tonight? You know, I actually do. Uh, when I was at BC, I coached defensive line. When I was at Oregon, I coached defensive line. You know, I've kind of gone back and forth between defensive line. And I really take the same format with a lot of them. I do have uh, defensive line. A lot of the drills are very similar. In fact, some of them are the exact same, you know, just incorporated a little more for what they have to do, you know. Uh, but right. Yes. Yeah, Coach, quick question. I, I'm just wondering, all you guys treat RPO like first step wise and all you guys react post-snap with the buck and everything. Excuse me, could you repeat that? Yeah, quick question about RPO. All you uh-huh. guys treat RPO like first step wise, are you more patient against it? or? Well, what we do, like I said, you know, reading, uh, you know, the run passes, you know, what they're doing, and it is a run pass option, so the quarterback's reading you. Like I said, we will read the mesh of the quarterback, so we don't need to go as fast, especially if it's a tight read. And a lot of the RPOs come off a tight read, and even if it's a wide read, the ball, the running back's going to clear the quarterback quickly. So that will give us a very quick read. So what we do is we will focus on, you know, the back to the mesh, and we'll read that. If, you know, he obviously pulls the ball, then, you know, we stay off, you know, and and the more you work, and that's why even in, uh, you saw some of the drills they do, you know, was just getting their eyes trained so they could see the run pass action. I'm using, you know, other linebackers. Kickers, kickers and uh, uh, long snappers are pretty good, actually, as far as you, you coach them up a little bit, you get them to run the stuff and give them a look. But we do uh, have them read that. And that's just a base read, you know, run pass. And that's where it all starts, run pass read. And, you know, run, we're downhill, path. Everything starts with a slide step or where the back's going. That was awesome, Coach. Appreciate you jumping on and, and giving so much information right there. I think the guys all got a lot of stuff out of that. So I appreciate that. Uh-